Howdy, it's Tubal Kane, this time with a repair job. I've had this uh, Logan Powercraft 10 inch lathe now for about uh, three or four months. And by the way, it's uh, Thanksgiving week of uh, 2013, and there's snow on the ground here in northern Illinois. But anyway, uh, as I use this lathe, uh, what, what I like as far as power feeds are the very lowest speeds. So when uh, the tumbler of the quick change gearbox is in this uh, uh, right hand position, uh, it skips. So I can feel that there's a bad gear in there or a strip gear or, or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the quick change gearbox off the machine so I can examine it. Now I did look underneath with an inspection mirror and a, a flashlight, but I had a stand on my head and uh, just wasn't very good and it's very greasy in there so I'm going to take the gearbox off and I'll do that by uh, disconnecting the banjo here if I can and I don't want to take the lead screw out so I'm going to drive that pin out and hopefully I can disconnect the lead screw from the gearbox and there's three bolts here one two three that hold it on so I'm going to give that a try I now have the gearbox loosened from the machine and it's just laying there. It was very easy to get the banjo off. I had to take off uh, one nut that allowed the uh, uh, one gear to come off. Then the whole banjo just split off, uh, slid off. This is the banjo here. And similarly over here, I uh, removed the three bolts and then just tapped ever so lightly on the end of this as I was holding it and uh, off came the gearbox so it's it's uh, sitting there loose right now I brought the carriage up to support the lead screw so the lead screw is just uh, hanging more or less loose uh, on this end but is still supported on the far end by uh, the bearing and that's the way it's going to remain until this job is done, which may be a long time. A quick change gearbox is a rather expensive and complicated transmission. That's Yeah, that's right, it's a transmission. And it's changing uh, this, the speed coming into it compared to the speed coming out to the lead screw. And there are 108 possibilities so there's a lot of gears in there and I haven't had one of these apart for 40 years since I had to redo all the Sheldon lathe gearbox when I first started teaching there wasn't a one of them that wasn't damaged no one had ever done any maintenance I found that to be a pattern in school shops that the, the teachers don't do any maintenance they just don't things break and they they stay broken but uh, I want to clean this up real good so I can examine the gears and see if I can get a gear either on eBay, uh, assuming it needs a gear, or Boston gear or McMaster car or possibly have to make one. So let's look at the underside. Here's the underside of that Logan gearbox and I counted them there are 21 gears in there and I already found the bad one. Now, I'm going to take the time to take this outside and uh, clean it thoroughly. I like to use a brake cleaner and I like to use it outside because it's in a spray but uh, it does take paint off so that's the big downside to it. And how in the heck am I going to get this thing apart? I do see that there's a set screw here on that shaft because it is on this shaft that I need to work. I don't want to take any more apart than necessary but I told you that it was this this tumbler here and the far one you know if you can visualize this thing before I turned it upside down and there is the bad gear and it is so dirty in there it's a little bit hard to tell but as I rotate this if I can Not that shaft, but this one. I guess I got to use a screwdriver. Those are good teeth there, but there is a whole row of missing teeth 
watch this now as I bring it around there are about uh, four missing teeth starting right here I'm sure this is the uh, the gear that got used the most because people like their slow speeds the faster speeds are primarily for uh, threading but probably 90% of the use of the lathe was for just uh, turning and using the power feeds and even the lowest uh, power feed on this machine is not low enough for me it's like four thousands where I like two thousands and I found that a lot of the lathes don't go any slower than that but I like a real slow speed for my finishing cuts and that's the culprit that's got to come out and be replaced so now I'm going to clean it. Okay, I'm back in the house. My hands are quite numb. You know, there's about a half inch of snow on the ground here. And uh, you know how to tell when you're done cleaning something like this? That's right. When you've used exactly one can of brake cleaner. But now that I get it in the light here and look at it closer, there's spots that I missed. So, uh, but at least it's clean enough to work on and <clears throat> the gears uh, I'll clean up again as I take them apart and I'm not taking them all out of there but uh, just a little uh, note here whenever I take something complicated apart I take a series of pictures sometimes I never have to look at them but boy you'll be glad you took pictures when you get stumped sometime I do not have uh, a parts breakdown this, on this but I do not think I need one either so uh, and the brake cleaner did start to lift the paint as predicted but mainly on the tumbler area here because I worked from the underside now also examining the teeth very closely I see how uh, many metal chips are packed down into the bottom of the teeth of the gears <clears throat> and I've, I've admonished people so many times in the past not to use compressed air around the lathe or to clean the lathe because even though this is the underside the chips fly up in there and they're, uh, they get stuck on the oil and the grease and uh, they cause a lot of wear and other problems so uh, and you can even see the chips in here see that because those aren't cleaned yet but I'm going to clean all of that now I'm going to attempt to take this gear out of there and in order to do that I'm not sure how to do it, but I'm going to start by loosening this collar, and there's a set screw there, and I believe the shaft will pull out, come out this way, so that I can get these gears out, and uh, there'll be five of them, one, two, three, four, five, that have to come out naturally to get at this one. So I'm going to give that a try now. And the nice thing about working on something like this is there's no rust. And I'm so used to working on old engines and uh, all kinds of other equipment that's been outdoors and suffering with the rust. And, uh, you know, you can spend the whole day on one bolt sometimes and then it breaks off. But uh, that won't be the case here because everything has been lubricated since day one. Now this is the shaft that I'm working on you see this uh, little brass bearing here so I'm tapping the shaft out with a punch and a hammer ever so lightly there was a little bit of a burr on the end of that shaft so I spent a little time filing that off and uh, now we'll see what we got as the uh, shaft gets pushed out as fate would have it I was tapping the wrong way this shaft has a keyway in it, but apparently the keyway doesn't go all the way through. So uh, I have tapped the shaft back out and I'm removing it from the far side. That was a cartoon. Again, I hope I'm not going into too much details, but many of you tell me that I am not, that I can't give enough detail. But uh, remember, I haven't had one of these apart in many years, so. This is a, a bit of a, a newbie for me too. So the shaft is coming out now, but now I'm using a real long punch. And the punch is in there all the way probably to the end of this gear. And it's going to retain those gears like ducks in a row. And maybe I won't take them out at all. We'll, we'll see. If I don't have to, I won't, other than I would like to clean them. 
and here's the shaft as it comes out and hopefully we'll release these gears this cluster of gears and uh, can you see the keyway there and I will continue tapping forgive me for the little rant now I got the shaft out and again I drove it out in this direction it's in quite good shape but see the keyway doesn't go all the way I've retained all these gears now I put a rod in here a 3 8 rod and let's see if we can get these gears out of there oh and they're clustered together with a brass bearing in there I'm going to keep those in order one that's a little one two and I might even tag those or whatever I have to do to remember them I don't know what's holding that one up there it is and there it is see all the missing teeth you know what if these are exactly the same and I'm going to check them to see if they are I may swap them because that's you know I don't care if I'm missing some of the uh, the feeds a little farther down the line this is the one I'm I'm interested in but let me uh, let me think about that now this uh, little gear here will come off the bigger one and I'm going to count the teeth and I'm going to determine the di diametral pitch and I will show you that if you're interested yeah how many teeth are missing there one two three four five teeth it appears are missing I clean these gears real well using my wife's toothbrush you know I'll rinse it out real good I don't think she'll know the difference do you now I counted the, the teeth and I, uh, I measured the diameters and actually all three small gears are the same they're 16 teeth and they're 0.896 diameter now the two large ones are also the same they are 32 teeth and they are 1.708 these two are exactly identical and there's the stripped one and uh, no I could change them and, and, I, and I still may I'm debating that but now I'm going on an eBay search you know there are some people that have heard the term stripped gears or that's gonna strip your gears or whatever you know but that's a good example of stripped gears and the smaller teeth tend to strip or the smaller gears tend to strip a little bit uh, easier now these gears are put together pressed together and then drilled and pinned you see that now that gear wouldn't be all that hard to make if I, make if I had the right cutters I'm going to go into the eBay and then into the Boston gear catalog and uh, see what I can find that's probably not a stock gear because of this uh, extension here that you know presses into the big gear if it was just a plain gear like this it would be simple enough and that is the same now as I cleaned these I found that uh, there were chips packed in there and there's a bit of roughness to these gears. I can feel where they're rough. So the good gears, I, after I clean them, I am going to put them in the lathe and I'm going to touch a file to them ever so lightly to get rid of the uh, roughness. And I think that's all due to chips. I don't think that they were run dry because it, was, it seemed like there was plenty of oil in there. And the way I count them, of course, is mark one, and that's, that'll be my number one, and I just count, go clear around. Count them three times. Do not count on uh, 
getting it correct the first time. Don't trust yourself. The older you get, I think, the less you trust yourself. There is a number on one of these gears. Where did I see it? Right there. It's a number 1220. I suppose that means a, a part number, probably a Logan part number. And I know that Logan does sell these. Matter of fact, I'll, I think I'll check on their site and see that if it's within the realm of possibility to buy that. But if that's a $100 gear, you know, guess what? I'm not buying one. Okay, to the pewter I go. I didn't have much luck on the internet. I looked both just for uh, gears like this, replacement gears that somebody was selling used ones. Could not find any. So I searched ENCO and MSC and all the different companies looking for gears. And what is complicated here, if I just wanted a gear like that, it'd be easy enough to find. But this particular gear runs all the way through this one. So what I'm going to do for now, I hate to leave a job unfinished. I just like to get it done. So I'm going to swap these two gears, just the position, in the gearbox. And then this is done, at least for now, and I'm going to put this back on the lathe. Then I'm going to continue my search for this over a period of time, which may be months, or maybe never, to see if I can find one like this, and, and then I'll take it apart and replace it. But uh, just a short lesson now on gears and how to identify gears. Now remember, I'm just an old shop teacher. I'm not an engineer. But here's what I know about gears. First of all, taking this uh, gear here, I counted up the teeth and there's 16 teeth. It's a half inch bore when you take the bushing out. Same would be true on this one. It's 3 eighths thick. Actually, this one's going to be thicker than that because it'll be three quarters thick if we were to machine it down. And that's what they started with. You can see what's left of the teeth when they pressed it in there. I know it's made of steel. By the way, these are spur gears. I don't know if I mentioned that, but spur gear is the most common type of gear that you're going to run into in this application where the teeth go straight across. They're not at an angle like a helical gear. And I'm going to assume it's a 14 and a half pressure degree angle, which is the most common. There's another one that's a 20 degree. But I don't know much about that. I miked it, and it's 0.896 diameter. Now what we'd like to find out is the diametral pitch and the pitch diameter. Because if you're going to cut a gear, you'd have to buy the gear cutters. And, and you know what, I looked through MSC and all of those, and they're not showing many gear cutters anymore. And I looked on eBay hoping that I could find a gear cutter and uh, I could not. But here's how to find the two unknowns. There are many good books on gears, some of them two and three inches thick. and They would contain much more than what you want to know, but here's an old one that I had in stock. And uh, in looking through it, there's a price sheet from 1937. Do you suppose those prices are in effect. But on these pages here is every formula you ever wanted to know in regards to uh, gear diameters and diametral pitch and all of that. And on this page there are little silhouettes here of uh, gear teeth showing the different diametral pitches. And what I did, I matched up one of these with uh, these various profiles here until I found what I wanted and it is a 20 diametral pitch but I'm also going to show you how to find that mathematically just in case you wanted to know the Boston Gear Company has been around forever I think they're still around I think like I know they are but in this book also are those profiles that I just showed you and a complete little lesson here on pressure angles, should you want to know what that is. But we're going with the 14 and a half pressure angle. And that's what we always used back when I was a shop teacher and I was in my prime.
I don't know where I got this sheet, but somebody gave it to me a long time ago, and this is to help you determine dimetrial pitch by a real simple method. And it just says, if you're not sure of your DP, use this simple procedure to determine it. Take one of your gears and count the teeth. Remember that was 16. Add 2 and divide the sum by the diameter. And there's the math. 16 plus 2 equals 18, and I divided it out, and I came with 20.08, and it goes way on down the line, but they said round it off, which is 20, and that is the di diametral pitch of that gear. And that would work for any of these because they're all the same diametral pitch. All of the formulas are on this page, but in order to find the pitch diameter, you simply take the number of teeth over the metro pitch, which is 16 over 20, divide it out, and it's 800 thousandths. That's the pitch diameter. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Because if you need to look in the catalogs to find a gear, they're going to ask you things like, what is the pitch diameter? What is the diametral pitch? What is the uh, pressure angle? Uh, what do you want it made of? Uh, and uh, so on and all of these other uh, data information here that I showed you a little while ago will be necessary. I know I've told you way too much. I changed my mind again and I took all the gears out of there Clean them thoroughly. There they are in a row. I hope I don't mix them up or my grandkids come down and play with them. And I cleaned them carefully with a brush. Some of them that were rough on the outside I put on the lathe on an arbor and gently, ever so gently, filed the outside of them. And there were several teeth that I had to dress and some chips that I had to pick out with a uh, scratch all. Now I'm going to go ahead and put these back in, and uh, I'm going to lubricate it generously on the shafts. And then before I, I install this back on the lathe, I intend to use some of that uh, gear lube like you might use in a transmission, that 80-90 weight. Because it really stays on the gears compared to regular lubricating oil. Three days have passed as I got frustrated and I quit for a while. But uh, here's what I have done. I turned down the bad gear just uh, to get rid of the teeth. And then I reassembled it, but I did reassemble it by swapping the two, like I, I mentioned. But uh, fool that I was, that didn't work at all, because then the only uh, gears or speeds I had was uh, uh, one and two, and then from here on down uh, on the tumbler, this gear, this gear, and this gear were not active because they were no longer in the chain. So uh, then I took the time, I had to take the time to put it back in its original place and now I'm pretty much back to where I started with uh, but at least there aren't going to be any gears bumping or grinding or anything like that. So uh, this is going to be put back on the lathe at least for now until I come up with some gears. I went on to the Logan actuator site and that gear is available, the uh, cluster, the two gears together, is available, $199. And uh, of course I'm not going to buy that, but uh, you, you know when you think about it, it's probably worth it. And I suspect that what they do is they, they hand the blueprint to a machinist, you know, he goes out from scratch and, and uh, makes that. I don't know if they got them in stock. I'm just de deducing that. But I also spent a lot of time going on the internet looking for a gear, and I have found this gear, but uh, there isn't a hub on it big enough for me to press it into this one. Also, I did a lot of searching, and I could not find the right gear cutter, because I thought I'll just cut my own gear. But I need 20 diametral pitch, and a cutter that will handle uh, uh, 16 teeth, because you know there's eight cutters in, in each set and then also uh, one that would have the right arbor, a one inch arbor that would fit my, uh, my sh the shank on my uh, 
R8 uh, milling machine arbor, I guess you call it. So for now, I'm a little bit frustrated and uh, uh, not sure what I'm going to do, but all i got to do is put this back on the lathe. that only takes a few minutes, and then the lathe is back in operation, except, of course, for that one uh, speed. And uh, sooner or later, I will find a gear or a cutter or, and get this fixed. It's Thanksgiving time, approximately, year 2013. And, uh, you know, I bought this lathe about three months ago. And if you look at my earlier video, where I think uh, the title is Tubal Cane Buys Yet Another Lathe, this time a Logan. But if you look at that carefully, you're going to see that there uh, is a screw stuck in this hole. And I noticed that, uh, you know, within a day or two, and I thought, oh, you know, somebody stuck a hole in the screw, or a screw in a hole, <laughs> screw in the hole. Uh, and maybe a child was playing around, you know, a, a small boy, that's just the height of their eyes, and they'll, they'll stick things into uh, various uh, holes. Um, so I just took it out and threw it away. But really, the previous owner, who was long dead, what he did is... Uh, to warn himself not to use this uh, gear uh, position here, which is uh, E, E, he stuck a bolt in there. And that's why that was in there, because it didn't work. So, da, I finally figured that out, and I'm back to uh, day one on this, and wasted a lot of time, but I sure do know how to take this apart quickly now, because I've had that, all those gears uh, in and out, I don't know how many times, and uh, it's a little tricky because there's a, a long key that I had to deal with. But anyway, uh, that's it for now, and uh, uh, the continuation of this will occur sooner or later.